everybody, Backyard Bullying here. Welcome one and all to this week's Ponderous Wednesday. Now if you're new to my channel or don't know, Ponderous Wednesdays are my forum for taking a thought-provoking and interesting topic and then having a good old ramble about it here on YouTube to stimulate some interesting discussion down in the comment section. Now this week we're going to be talking about coins and the future of coins and whether or not we should even be bothering with coins. Do they have a place in your stack? Do they have a place in future society and also whether or not they will be useful in a SHTF scenario. Are having coins as opposed to bars going to actually benefit you anything at all? Now coins have evolved so much over this last century and they are continuing to evolve in the way that we society interacts and uses cash and coins. So it's a, I think a really interesting topic and I'd encourage you guys to comment down below with your thoughts on it. That's why I make these videos to get that interesting discussion flowing. Now, all of that, I just need to caveat with my usual disclaimer to say that I am not here to give financial advice. I'm just rambling on about shiny things here on my table. So any financial decisions you make having watched this video are yours and yours alone. So on the right here, we have a whole array of old world style silver coins. And these are, these are just harking back to other times when we had real silver, real money, in our currency and our coins and our cash and we have moved away from that in society now and the only real silver coins which are made nowadays are very much more on this side of the table which is that kind of bullion grade silver coins and commemorative coins collectors coins now i have here uh, in fact pretty much the whole last four or five months worth of in focus friday episodes but these represent i think an interesting discussion point in their own right because these are all collectors coins but they are 999 silver so they're real coins most of them in fact, in fact i think pretty much all of these coins are technically coins they have a denomination on them i think maybe the uh, zeeson gallus coin or round here is the only one that isn't but they all have actual denominations on them. So you see here, this is a $5 Nui uh, coin. This one, Canadian one, has got $5 on it as well. So what does that actually mean? Are these actually legal tender? Do they have a place in the future? Can you ever theoretically use these? You know, we've seen various different economies around the world have hyperinflation and, and collapses. Venezuela is the most recent one, and I see it actually commented on quite a lot in my videos about how one ounce of silver will buy you six months worth of food or have you down there. But I guess the question is, does it? Does it actually do that? Is it being bought as a currency coin? Is it being used as, you know, $5? In the case of a hyperinflation economy, $5 is going to be worth nothing. Or is it then the fact that this is a real commodity? So lots of interesting things to talk about. Let's focus on the right-hand side of the table to start with though. So a lot of these coins are of course now out of circulation other than perhaps some of these half dollars from the USA, which you can still find now if you go to banks and get big coin roll hunts and do things like that. You can find real silver. But for us, for example, in the UK, the way that we interact with cash now is very much in a kind of digital way. In fact, the more and more now, you know, whenever I go to the shops, you don't go and take out a bunch of cash and then pay for your groceries uh, or your clothes or whatever it is you're buying in cash. You pay for it with a debit card or a credit card. You know, cryptocurrencies, digital currencies and digital transactions are fast overtaking the way that we interact with coins and currency. And, uh, you know, coins themselves just have less and less of a place in today's society. But they are still useful and they are still used. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, discontent with banking sectors, to say it politely. I think that is probably the most polite way of putting it. Uh, and trust within banking institutions is obviously important and key. And one of the brilliant things about a real silver coin back in the day was that it was a real piece of currency. It was real silver. It always had an intrinsic value. Even though it was a half dollar here, it still had silver in it. It was real. It was something that you could tangibly have and use and people would want. And we've seen throughout history that silver and gold and other precious metals have been used as currency for thousands of years. And I do think that there is a place for that in the future. However, we are in an interesting time now where coins are not made of precious metal other than over here on the other side of the table in investment grade bullion coins. Now, as I said, most of these coins, if not all of them, have some kind of denomination on them. This one is a $1 coin. So could you go into a Barbadian shop or a Bayesian shop, I think it's called, and uh, pay for something with this? Could you use this as an actual cash currency coin? 
Uh, you probably couldn't. You probably would have to have a lengthy discussion with the shop owner about the fact that this is silver and that it's actually you know, got an intrinsic value of more than a dollar, so he's getting a very good bargain for it. So, um, you know, in terms of like coins, these are not really technically coins. They've got that kind of denomination, which I think for the most part is down to, uh, you know, basically capital gains tax exemptions for various countries, tax uh, status for the coins, and uh, and generally, you know, they've been meant, minted by the Royal Mint or Canadian Royal Mint or uh, US Mint, etc., etc. So there's uh, a whole host of different questions which come up about these investment coins these bullion coins and whether and they whether they actually have a place in the future so that brings me on to the next point which is why do we bother buying coins in the first place as opposed to bars and uh, there's a couple of schools of thoughts here first you'll see that all of these coins are pretty much collectors coins they have you know intrinsic values above and beyond their uh, silver value as well as their denomination value with perhaps the exception of one of these which is very interesting uh, the one on the left as you can in fact both of these are 100 SETIs coins I thought I had a 5 SETIs coin on the table but I have two 100 SETIs coins and these were mint error coins and 100 SETIs is apparently worth something like 25-30 pounds so this was a mint error it has a higher denomination than the silver content so that again raises interesting questions uh, you know in the future when the silver content uh, is worth less than the denomination of the coin, what do you do there? So in the future, are we going to be able to use these coins or are they just novelty collector items in the form of silver? If you're gonna invest in silver, why not get just a giant lump of it? Why not even buy paper silver instead of physical silver? Well, having the protection, the financial insurance, as a lot of people call it, of real physical silver in your possession is, in my opinion, the key uh, reason you would still buy these coins. Now, of course, it's going to come down then to budgets and collector budgets and whether you want to take risks on having a collector's coin like this uh, Dragon and Tiger from the Perth Mint, which has a very large premium on it, or whether you would just want to go for something a little bit more generic and cheaper, like the Spade Guineas, which just, you know, they're very attractive coins and they have a certain element of collectorship to them, but ultimately they're a lot cheaper to buy as a unit price. And I think that possession is really important for a number of reasons. Firstly, you know, the distrust in the banking sectors. If something was to collapse, you've got a certain amount of money in your bank account, you're not necessarily going to be able to get that money out. Of course, we've got guarantees from various governments around the world on certain amounts of money that's protect protected in your bank account. But let's be honest, if a major financial institution collapse happened again and there was hyperinflation, currencies collapsed, the currency that's in your bank account, whether you've got a large sum or a small sum, will eventually become worthless. And you've seen that in countries like Venezuela, Zimbabwe, you know, you'll be, you'll have like a really, what, what would be classed as a high sum of money in your current, in your currency. Uh, you may have, let's say, a million Zimbabwe dollars and that's gone, that's very good, you're very wealthy, very rich. That money then hyperinflates to trillions and trillions of dollars worth to the pound and of course then you have zero essentially in your bank account whereas having some physical silver whether it's an old school world coins like this that you've collected or whether it's a new silver bullion helps protect you and gives you a physical asset and that physical asset is something that human history has always fall, fallen back on uh, throughout history we've seen gold and silver used 5,000 plus years now in coins and currency and a barter exchange mechanism and that's one of the major reasons that, well, not, I suppose not necessarily the major reason, that is a major reason for some people as to why they invest in silver and silver coins, old school silver coins, different size silver coins, even down to smaller coins like this one, up to the bigger, larger lumps of silver like this. And that is if we did have an economic apocalyptic scenario, which I would just like to put my normal kind of caveat in here is I do not think that is a very likely scenario. I think that our modern society uh, has moved beyond that. I think now currency and cash is very much just about numbers on a screen rather than physical assets. But that is a discussion for another time. But if that scenario happens, if I'm proved wrong and that scenario happens, silver and gold will eventually look to become that trading barter exchange, that common, that lowest common denominator exchange barter tool system. Now it's not necessarily going to be that that is overnight going to make somebody, uh, you know, a millionaire essentially if you have a large proportion of gold and silver in your house. Uh, because of course if that kind of scenario happened there'd be, there'd be huge issues to consider other than having a little bit of gold and silver. You know, of course food, shelter, water, medicine, all of those things are critical as well and uh, you know, in that kind of situation, you just don't know what's going to happen. Of course, I'm 
a, I'm a big pessimist when it comes to this kind of world, and if that does happen, I fully expect to be swamped up in the first wave of people to fall. If there's a nuclear war, I have no doubt that I probably won't be one of the very minor, uh, minuscule number of people that survived it, for example. So it's all a kind of moot question in my point. I can prepare for it, but I really don't think it's going to be even happening, or even if it does happen, I probably won't survive to see it through. So it's a very kind of interesting topic as to whether you take that seriously or not, and I'm not belittling anybody who does. I really think it's, you know, it's, it's a decision for each and every person to make in their own right. Uh, it's just not for me. But in that situation, having silver, whether it's in the form of, you know, an attractive looking coin or whether it's just in a giant bar or in a tiny little coin from Canada here, it's silver. It's got a real common value to it that people will recognize. And it's a barter system. You know, if you've got medicine, if the other person over the hill has got water, you need water, they need medicine. You can do a one for one swap. That's easy. However, if you are a, uh, if you've got a build, if you've got already a lot of medicine, you've got a lot of water, they need to have water and you've already got a lot of medicine, you don't need medicine in return, what do you get in return? Of course you can get silver, you can get that to then barter with the person across the other way who has petrol which you need to put in your cars. So you see it is a way of being able to trade uh, throughout different uh, groups and cultures and societies and that is why we have coins and that is why in my opinion coins and currency as we know it will still exist for a long time. Uh, as opposed to just going straight into kind of that digital uh, kind of cash and currency. So there we go. That is my musings and ramblings on the subject of coins and whether or not we're going to still have coins in the future. I would love to know your opinions on it. I'd love to know uh, what your outlook is on coins, whether it's something you're focusing on the right hand side of the table here, it's old school silver coins, or whether you're focusing on modern bullion coins. I'd love to know as well if you've ever had a social experiment where you've tried to pay for something with a real bullion silver coin. It would be very interesting to find out whether you've done that and whether you've been successful or not. A very interesting social experiment, and maybe one that I might try at some point in the future. Now, if you like this video, please put a thumbs up on it and share it around on your social media. That would be very helpful for everything that I do here on my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to see more of my musings and ramblings, then I have a playlist down below with all of my Ponderous Wednesday videos. And if you'd like to see future videos of Ponderous Wednesday, then please do make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the alarm bell if you'd like to get a notification when those videos go live. Otherwise, that is all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic week. And please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.